Good morning, everybody. I'm Gareth Jude, and I am a shopkeeper. Um, so we'll really flick the switch back to retail now. And I'm here today to talk to you about 5G and AR, VR. And why is this important? Um, well, the people who are building the networks, Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei, have all identified AR, VR as the prime application for these new networks. So today I'll talk about what 5G is, um, why it's important, and then I'll look at some of the retail applications. You can see my logo there on the screen. I've got a business called uh, Think Uncommon. We're all retailers. And what we're trying to do is help retailers innovate. Our experience is innovation in retail isn't blocked by the technology. It's not blocked by strategies. It's actually blocked by the processes retailers have. So we're looking to uh, bring new processes that can help retailers actually change. My background, retail, I got my first job in a retail store in the 70s, and I'm not talking about the late 70s. I got my first job in a retail store in the 70s when I was at school. I've spent the last 30 odd years in retail, but the last 25 years or so, I've been involved in retailing of technology. So I was at Dick Smith, you know, the biggest retailer of cellular phones in the 90s. Um, then I was at 3G, helping them build the, um, uh, sorry, at 3, helping them roll out their stores. And most recently, I was at Telstra. I was the global lead for retail for eight years at Telstra up until the end of last year. So what is 5G anyway? Um, if you're browsing on your phone for a hotspot over the next few days in Melbourne, you'll probably see a few 5G hubs pop up. Um, it's, it's started. It, it is started. And what is the network? Well, it's, it's faster. It's got a maximum theoretical speed that's 100 times faster than plain old 4G. There's a few flavours of 4G in the world. We have plain old 4G and LTE in Australia, but it's 100 times faster theoretically than 4G. On a median, it's seven times faster on browsing, 12 times faster on download. One of its biggest advantages is its capacity. It's quite mind-blowing in its theoretical capacity. One million devices per square kilometre. We've all had the problem at the football, trying to text or send a picture at a vital time in the game and not being able to do so. 5G promises that that uh, will be eradicated. And 10,000 times more capacity than a 4G network. That's its biggest dramatic uh, difference. Low latency, it can d transmit data quicker. Very important if you're streaming live video um, and very important if you're uh, trying to trade, for example and more reliable. We've had lots of outages in our 4G networks, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. But um, this technology is inherently more reliable than 4G technology. Um, you might say, well, why do we need this? Aren't we all connected already? And in various contexts, in all in sort of industries, we've got assets connected, we've got livestock connected we've, on farms, we've got produce like Penfolds have their vines connected, so you can check provenance of where they're coming from, supply chains are connected. Do we really need another network? Well, yes, we do. And this is the reason why we need it. ABS has actually stopped collecting data uh, on consumption of data on mobile devices. They've handed that over to ACCC, and the data is incomparable anymore. So the last data I can show you is from this time last year. But hopefully this graph shows the point. So between 2016 and 2017, the demand on the network doubled. The amount of data transmitted onto mobile devices doubled in that year. And then the following year, it increased another 50%. Telstra said in 2016, when I was there, over the next five years, we expect data consumption on mobile networks to increase by 500%. That's a huge problem. That's part of the reason we've had data outages, but it's also part of the profit problem for cellular carriers at the moment. How do you deal with that? We're all paying about the same we paid last year for our cellular plan, but we're consuming maybe 30, 40 percent more data, and all the carriers are having to build furiously to keep up with that. So the main driver of 5G is network capacity. It's seen to be by the carriers a great way to break this problem. And there are new video formats coming. Video is the big driver of that uh, data consumption. There are new video formats coming that can't be supported by 4G. So that's another driver of this. 
Um, and it's happening. I mentioned earlier, the five, if, you, if you scroll on your phone, you will see 5G hubs. Telstra are the first retailers uh, of the devices. You can buy a 5G handset in Melbourne today if you want. And there, are network, there is a network of sorts in Melbourne today. Optus is rolling out too. And Optus, uh, it's more selective. You have to be in certain suburbs. You've got to express your interest. And they only have uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, hubs at this stage. But they will be there. So this is happening. Big investments have been made. And we're talking billions of dollars that are going into this. So it will happen. But of course, there is a big elephant in the room. Um, you know, I've been around this space for 25 years. And I remember when I started at Dick Smith Electronics, uh, we were in the analog era. We were moving to this new promised land of GSM. A few years later, I was with three, and uh, we were starting to roll out our stores. We were in the promised land of video calling, and that didn't go too well, but we were in this new promised land of 3G. Uh, and then a few years later, I was at Telstra, and we were in the 4G world, and people really were downloading um, movies and TV shows to watch on the bus going to work. So the promises of these networks have been really high um, pre-launch, but they're tested under the weight of consumers. Once consumers actually jump on the network and start using them, we find out how these networks perform. Because they are like a bus. Um, it goes really well when there's only a couple of people on. But when the bus is full, uh, they slow down. And um, we're waiting to see, really, how these networks perform. But what about retail? Um, that's my space. That's where I've worked most of my life. What are the applications for 5G in retail? So we're talking now about 5 we're talking about AR, VR to mobile devices. That's what this is about. Um, here's an example uh, from Topshop. And um, retailers are really in a bit of an existential crisis at the moment. And the existential crisis is for thousands of years, retail stores have existed to bring products, services to customers at prices they're willing to pay. That's been the purpose of retail for 5,000 years. But that's all changed with the internet because the internet has solved that problem. I'll take a bet that some of you will be shopping in, in this session today. Not this session, because mine's really interesting. But some of the other sessions today that aren't as interesting as this, you'll just take the smartphone out and you'll start shopping. And you can shop with any retailer in the world. With a couple of extra clicks, you can get the best price. The problem that retail was set up to solve has been solved by the internet. So retailers are looking for new ways to be relevant to consumers. And one of them is by creating what's called the campfire effect. This is a phrase developed by a guy called Rick Caruso. Um, he's a shopping center developer from the US. And he says the purpose of retail is to build spaces where people will gather. And when they gather, like around a campfire, they will spend. That's the theory. And his shopping centers are the Grove and Glendale in LA, which you may have visited. And they generate about 10 times per square foot uh, compared to the average of US shopping centers. He's a very successful developer. Um, so here's an example of Topshop trying to build their campfire effect by running a virtual reality catwalk show. Um, and these people with HoloLens devices on their heads are watching a cat show. And of course, the hope is that they go back into the store and buy some of the things they've seen on the catwalk show. Like the previous presenter, I'm not sure about VR in retail. I don't know if I'm going to be going to a shop on a regular basis and putting a pair of goggles on, quite frankly. Um, I, I, might, I don't think it works. But promotionally, I think um, there will be some potential in this. Much more potential in this. I'm not going to show this video clip, but there is a video clip you can download. Uh, this is IKEA Place. You can download the app today in some of the less interesting presentations. And what it allows you to do is place IKEA furniture in this room. You might want to put a, a, a bookcase on the stage here. You can do that with Place. And that's really great. And it, it opens up the opportunity for IKEA to sell much more furniture, which isn't traditionally an online purchase online, because you're able to visualize that in its context. And it's not just online. Uh, we saw earlier Hyundai using this type of technology in their new showroom in Martin Place. And if you're looking to buy a house and you've been out to the fringes of, uh, of Melbourne or the fringes of Sydney, wherever you may live, to Metricon or to Stockland, 
They're using virtual reality to show you the house from the plan. They'll wave a device over a plan and the, and the house will be built for you and you can see the house and you can virtually walk through it. So the potential of AR for retail I think is quite, is quite high. And of course with 5G, the, what they can do in these applications will get better and better and better. Um, I think the main application is going to be for size of retail footprint and for where you buy bulky goods. Cars are going to be sold more and more in shopping centres and in CBDs in small spaces without the car being there. Furniture the same. Um, so these are some of the applications. Now, we've got a room full of foodies. What do you care about bulky goods? Uh, so let's move on to uh, food. And we've seen a, a couple of hints of what can be done in food, but I want to talk about this one. This is a business called Cool Hobo. It's one of the many, many AR companies. And they've looked at what can be done with AR in supermarkets. They've won a bid with Walmart and JD in China for an app to, uh, to run um, in the supermarkets. Those of you who haven't been to China or don't go to China regularly, it is the, it's where it, it's happening. It's all happening in China in regards to supply chain, in regards to retail, in regards to retail technology. Walmart haven't got this in America, but they have got it um, in the Chinese market. This is from Japan, and we can just show the video now, please. So the lady's doing a shop. She's firstly going to look at some Lindt chocolate. She can see the ingredients. Um, she can see price. She can see the promotional video. And uh, she's eventually going to put one in the basket because um, she likes it so much, taking a picture, looking at other pictures, adding it to her photo collection and in the basket it goes. Now what else would you have when you're shopping for chocolate than a nice bottle of bubbles? So that's the next on the list, a bottle of bubbles and we can see price, we can see some alternative products that you might be interested in and here's one, a bottle of red and uh, learning a bit about ingredients, learning a bit about provenance, where it's from, uh, learning a bit about uh, reviews. So these are reviews in Japanese um, and then the ability to comment on those uh, reviews and your own experience with the product. Now that's AR in supermarket. Issue there has always been the same issue. Supermarket shopping is a, needs a lot of hands, right? You've got two hands on the device. You notice the basket was wrapped around the arm of the lady but usually that's not the shopper. The shopper is a lady with two kids. She's got a trolley. Uh, this has been a hard thing. Unless you're Shane Warne and you have dexterity to do more than two or three things at the same time in Shane's famous fall from grace a few years ago, uh, I think you're unlikely to be able to handle this one too well. But let's see. The technology is going to improve. AR in supermarket, I think, uh, has got its time coming. What the technologists are saying is that there's going to be a new frontier for retailing uh, brought along by 5G that's to do with AR, VR, and that's the avatar layer. Uh, we all deal today with Siri, with Alexa, and we're getting used, now, used to now, you know, asking Siri to take, write an email for us maybe, or to get directions to where we're going when we're in the car. And Siri and Alexa and all the other voice products are based on AI. They're learning all the time. They're learning how you speak, they're learning your words, they're learning what to do with your words. 5G will give us the ability to add video to that equation. So it'll use the camera and it'll learn what it's seeing in the room, it'll learn about what objects are, it'll learn about your facial expressions. And it raises the possibility of the avatar becoming the ultimate shopping assistant. And we have some, uh, a little video clip here. This is very embryonic technology. We have a little video clip of some of the possibilities. The main thing to look at in this clip is how uh, the avatar uh, can learns. Can do something else? Um, how about the moonwalk? So he's a bit of a dancer, this avatar. But look at um, how it's learning. This is a keyboard, 93%. Uh, I think that's a can, 67%. And it gets better and better and better. AI does that. It learns every time it has an interaction. Um, Do the chicken dance. It's learned another dance. 
But now looking at your facial expressions and your emotions, and you can see at the bottom of the screen what, what the avatar thinks those expressions mean, and they're pretty accurate already. So we're back to that one. We can count that one. We've seen that already. So, um, look, Nick, that's it from me. I'm posting on this a lot on LinkedIn, so if you want to connect, please do. If you want to talk about retail innovation, if you're frustrated with your customers not innovating fast enough, if you're a retailer and you're frustrated you're not innovating fast enough, talk to us about that as well. Thanks a lot.